My name is Hank Paulson. I'm a neurologist at the University of Michigan. The dementias as a group are growing as a cause of death in our country. Why is that? It's because we're living longer and the dementias generally occur as we age. Over five million Americans have Alzheimer's. Another million have Lewy body disease. We don't know how many have a mixed dementia, but there's quite a few out there. We say it's dementia when someone has impairment in two or more cognitive domains that are sufficiently severe that they affect one's normal functional activities. There's uh, a slide I use a lot in talks. It talks about the causes of dementia in 1835. And of course, at the time, they thought things like uh, sadness and mercury and syphilis or something equivalent to syphilis. Uh, were causing dementia. In fact, some of those things do cause cognitive impairment. Alois Alzheimer's described in 1907 this woman, who was fairly young, uh, who'd had profound problems with language and memory. And she died and he was able to look at her brain and he noticed in the brain there were these distinctive pathological features. We now know those as plaques and tangles. In 1907, uh, some of the scientists in the room said, you know, interesting, but this does not explain normal late life senility or dementia that we know about. This is something special and early. So for decades, not anything happened about what we now know as Alzheimer's disease. It was really only in the 50s and 60s that some of the biochemistry was started on Alzheimer's. And in the 80s and then the 90s where the genetics really took off, uh, where we started to realize, hey, Alzheimer's is not uncommon. It is the most common form of dementia. It does occur late in life as well as early in life and the genes are involved and that indeed these plaques and tangles are a critical part of that. There are so many different ways we investigate disease processes in the dementias. People make mouse models. They work with proteins in test tubes. They study circuitry in the laboratory. But a key part of understanding the disease process is going to the gold standard. What's the gold standard? Looking at the tissue of people who actually had disease. And what you're seeing behind me here is the Michigan Alzheimer's Disease Center Brain Bank. What you see here is a freezer. It's not your typical freezer, it's a lot colder than that. We have frozen brain tissue in here, and these brains will include Alzheimer's brains, dementia with Lewy body brains. Of our roughly 900 brains, almost three quarters are dementia brains, and so that's very important for us. It complements what we do with living people, but it's a critical part of the clinical research. So we spend a fair amount of time telling people of how important that is while they participate in our research. In the process, they make a commitment, in many cases, to donate their brain. We can go back and figure out precisely what was the underlying condition. Was it Alzheimer's? Was it vascular dementia? Was it frontotemporal dementia? Was it something we didn't anticipate seeing? This is the cerebral cortex, and uh, this is stained for the amyloid plaques, and, and sure enough, there are there are plaques that are present in this particular brain. This is from someone who clinically had features that suggested Alzheimer's. Many people don't realize this, but you're born with all the neurons you're ever gonna have. So the trick then to living a long and successive life is to protect those neurons from toxic insult. And so it's extraordinarily vulnerable to protein misfolds that clog up that transportation system. Normal cells, if they have a toxic element introduced, can keep dividing, dividing, and dilute it out just through division. Neurons don't have that option. The problem with Alzheimer's and when somebody becomes symptomatic is that the brain already has had, has had a major injury to the brain. There's a lot of atrophy. There has been a lot of accumulation of plaques and tangles that have destroyed important centers of the brain. So by the time that we start treating our patients, unfortunately we cannot improve anything. We can only perhaps for a period of six to 12 months decrease the speed of decline with the current medications that we have. We couldn't be at a better time in terms of uh, the course in history. And that's because I think we've learned that there's more to Alzheimer's disease than just getting rid of the uh, amyloid plaques or even perhaps the tangles.